Informative Scene Decomposition for Crowd Analysis, Comparison, and Simulation Guidance. In this paper, we present a new multi-purpose framework for automatic crowd analysis, comparison, and simulation guidance. Crowd simulation has been widely used in different fields, such as games and movies, architecture design, virtual reality, and so on. To make the behaviors more human-like in simulation, real-world data has been increasingly relied upon. This is facilitated by the fast development of cheaper and accurate sensors including cameras. Meanwhile, with advanced data processing algorithms, more and more data becomes accessible. However, Real-world data is hard to use, especially when it comes to analyzing crowds, evaluating and guiding simulations. A typical scenario is that a video is provided to a simulation animator or engineer. And he or she is asked to set up simulations accordingly, so that simulated agents mimic real human behaviors. However, by simply watching videos or computing naive statistics doesn't solve the problem at all because there are several challenges in dealing with real-world data, which inhibits its usage in practice. The first challenge is data complexity. Crowd data varies in space, time, and dynamics. In trajectories extracted from videos, which is one of the most prevalent form of crowd data, the space, time, and dynamics information is mixed and unstructured. This makes the initial analysis difficult. Next, there is intrinsic motion randomness in individual motions. This is why straight lines are rarely observed in data. In addition, such motion randomness greatly affects the behavior modeling. Last but not least, crowd data is normally huge in volume and vary in quality. Data can be as long as hours to days. Tracking errors and missing targets happen frequently. To address the challenges, an ideal solution is an effective and efficient method which automatically takes highly unstructured and noisy data as input, structures it in separate modes in different dimensions, such as the space flows, their time profiles and speed profiles. By achieving so, a space, time, speed mode combined, can describe a unique activity in the scene. Further, since it is hard to know in advance how many such activities there are, the solution is also supposed to be able to automatically compute them ideally to accommodate a potentially infinite number of activities. In this paper, our framework is based on an innovative method that can provide such capabilities. Formally, we propose, to our best knowledge, the first multi-purpose framework for crowd analysis, visualization, simulation evaluation, and simulation guidance. The framework includes a new activity analysis method by unsupervised clustering, a new visualization tool for highly complex crowd data, a set of new metrics for comparing simulated and real crowds, and a new approach for automated simulation guidance. To this end, we have technical contributions including, to our best knowledge, the first nonparametric Bayesian clustering method that holistically considers space, time, and dynamics for aforementioned purposes, and a new Markov chain Monte Carlo method which achieves effective inference. Our framework starts with a Bayesian model called Triplet Hierarchical Dirichlet Processes, or THDP. THDP takes raw trajectories as input, and use 3HDP models to model the space, time, and speed information. The 3HDPs are linked, so that space, time, and dynamics information is analyzed together. Due to the increased model complexity of THDP compared with standard HDP models, we also propose a new inference method. Please refer to the paper for technical details. Here we show experimental results. We first introduce the three data sets used to cover a variety of environments, duration, and crowd dynamics. The first data set is Forum. It contains 664 trajectories and lasts for approximately 5 hours in an afternoon. This is an indoor environment where pedestrians are in general slow and casual. The second is a car park data set, which contains more than 40,000 trajectories over five days. This is an outdoor environment where both pedestrians and vehicles are tracked. The last one is the New York Central Terminal. It contains more than 12,000 trajectories and lasts approximately 45 minutes. It is an indoor environment where the speed varies among different pedestrians. 
we first show that our visualization can help capture the space semantics. Here are the top 9 activities in the forum data set. With the environment information, we can speculate their meanings. The first flow is people coming down from the stairs and leave the building via the side door, indicated by 1 and 2. The second flow is people coming off the lifts and leave the building via the front entrance indicated by 3 and 4. They happened in the beginning which is early afternoon, so they might be going out for lunch. Next, we show results in the car park data set. Besides the space flows, first, we notice that many time peaks are captured for nearly all activities. This is understandable because the data is over several days. It shows that our model can automatically structure very complex temporal information over a long duration. Furthermore, it shows major activities in different periods of time. For instance, for this time peak, the top three space flows are the first, second, and the sixth flows. Also, the speed profiles can help distinguish between the type of objects tracked. For instance, the sixth space flow has large mass distributed over 5 meter per second, indicated by the red box in the speed profile. Looking at its space flow, we can easily speculate that most of them must be cars. In contrast, the ninth space flow has large mass distributed in low speed region. Combined with its space flow, we speculate that most of them are pedestrians. After previous full mode visualization, we show conditioned visualization. Assuming users are particularly interested in a certain period of time. Our method can show how prominent each space flow is within that period. In this case, the user is interested in the period indicated by the red box. We use percentages to indicate the prominence of each space flow. This is very helpful in identifying, for example, during rush hours, what major space flows are. Similarly, if the users are interested in a speed range, our method can also show how prominent each space flow is within that speed range. In this case, the user is interested in a speed range around 1.1 meter per second. We show the prominence of different space flows in the form of percentages. This is very helpful in identifying, for example, in what areas people in general tend to walk slowly or fast. Of course, if given space flows in interest, we can show their time speed joint distributions. Here are some examples. For each space flow, the time speed distribution shows how speed distributions of the pedestrians on this flow changes over time. This is helpful in identifying, for example, when congestion might happen, where it happens, and how serious it is. One benefit of having probabilistic models is that we can also identify anomaly trajectories. Note that these trajectories are regarded as anomalies for many reasons. It can be their spatial, temporal or speed pattern. We not only are able to identify anomalies, but also can tell what factors make them anomalies. The triangle with the trajectory color indicates what factors contribute more. If the trajectory is closer to one vertex, say the space vertex, it means its time and speed profiles are very different from the others. For example, T1, the yellow trajectory, is identified as an anomaly. In the triangle, it shows that its space likelihood is relatively high, which means it has an unusual time and speed pattern. Another example is T2, its position in the triangle indicates that it has relatively normal space and time, but its speed is abnormal. Overall, OutModel provides a rich visualization for anomaly analysis. Our method can also compare simulated and real crowds for simulation evaluation. To look into what information is important when setting up simulations based on data, we set up four scenarios where more and more information is provided to the users. Random is the basic setting where users only know roughly the starting and ending areas and have to estimate the other parameters by watching the video. SDRTS is where space, time, and speed information is provided. The rest is in the middle. We ask the users to try their best to set up simulations in different settings. We first propose various average likelihoods as metrics. Different average likelihoods, or AL metrics, evaluate different aspects of the simulation. 
we show the results on the overall performance, or dimension-specific performance, such as space only, space-time and space-speed. Here only numbers in the same color should be compared. The higher the value is, the more similar the simulation is to the real data under that metric. Overall as expected, random achieves the lowest score on every test. SDRTS achieves the best. It is because it is a fully informed setting. More detailed analysis can be found in the paper. If the user is interested in looking into a certain flow, we can use distribution pair distance, or DPD metrics. Given such a space flow, we can compare the simulations with real data on that flow in space, time, and time speed. The corresponding flows in simulation are shown below their corresponding simulation video. We omit the random situation due to space limit. Again, SDRTS achieves the best results as it is equipped with the most prior information. Although SDRTS performs the best across board, it is still not ideal. It is easy to spot that all the simulated flows are narrower than the data. This is because there is no motion randomness modeled so that during simulation, no such information was used. Our method provides a holistic and fully automated guidance for simulation. The details of how to guide simulations can be found in the paper. Here we use the same space flow as an example to compare our guided simulation with other manually set simulations. Since we focus on one space flow, we use the same DPD metrics for comparison. Qualitatively, our method generates more realistic flow as it captures the within flow randomness. Other simulations tend to generate narrower flows because when there is no guiding trajectories, straight lines are simulated. Quantitatively, our guided simulation achieves better performance than all manually set simulations. We also show the evaluation results of our guided simulation against other manually set simulations, when using AL metrics. Again, our guided simulation outperforms the other manually set simulations. Finally, we show the video of our guided simulation in the New York Central Terminal. In summary, we proposed the first multi-purpose framework for crowd analysis, visualization, simulation evaluation, and automated guidance. To this end, we proposed a new non-parametric Bayesian model and a new Markov chain Monte Carlo inference method. We also evaluated our framework on datasets that cover a wide range of environments, duration, and crowd dynamics. Empirical results show that our approach is effective, efficient, and holistic. Thank you very much for watching.